The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our discussion on processing cash receipts in Design Manager. My name is Brad, and I'll be hosting the demonstration today. If you have questions during the webinar, feel free to enter them into the questions pane on your GoToWebinar panel. If the question is outside of the scope of today's discussion, please email them to support at designmanager.com. And lastly, if you missed a portion of the webinar or want to review any of our past discussions, go to our YouTube channel at Design Manager Inc., Design Manager INC, and here you have a complete listing of all sorts of topics, including quick start videos, shorter tutorials, and then all of our more in-depth webinars like the one today for project management courses, accounting courses, etc. Okay. Now today we'll be focusing on recording cash receipts of various types in Design Manager. We'll be exploring configuring Design Manager to properly record the receipts in the desired method, the mechanics of doing so, along with how receipts ultimately affect our accounting records, along with other related topics. So let's get started. Let's begin with exploring some information that must be entered prior to beginning uh, properly recording any of our types of cash receipts in Design Manager. Now, Design Manager comes configured with much of the following information, but you may need to uh, certainly revise or expand upon it in the future. Before all else, we need to have at least one account into which we'll be recording the cash receipts. Design Manager always comes configured with one account just for that purpose. So let's take a look. Under our Accounting tab, we're going to focus on our General Ledger frame and click our Accounts button, which gets us to our Account Glossary. Now, Design Manager uses account 10010 cash checking as the default account to represent your checking account with a banking institution. Now, notice it's an asset account, but meaning that it'll be uh, listed on your balance sheet as part of the overall fiscal health of the company. Let's take a look at that balance sheet as we'll be looking, as we'll be reviewing it uh, multiple times throughout the discussion today. I'm going to click on my financial statements button, which gets me right to my general ledger reports and my financial statement sub reports. There's our balance sheet. And I'm going to go ahead and add it to our favorites because, again, we'll be looking at it many times today. And if we run our balance sheet, we can see, make this a little bit larger, in our asset area, hey, there's our cash checking account with the current balance. Now, our cash checking is a specialized asset to differentiate it from other asset accounts like our accounts receivable or inventory or work in process, etc. It has a specialized type of asset bank checking account. It's this specialization that's allowed, that will allow us to record receipts into uh, the account, write checks out of it, uh, transfer payments between other accounts and those types of things. Now, right off the bat, you certainly may want to change the name of the account to something more representative of your actual checking account. So let's say this is uh, Wells Fargo Checking. And if we click OK, we can see just like that we've changed the account name. And again, I recommend doing so just so the account is the most logical and easily identifiable by yourself. What if we want to create additional accounts as well? Let's say we have a savings account with Wells Fargo in addition to our checking account. Well, we can do that very easily as well. In this case, we'll click on the Add button, and we'll input all the necessary information. First is the unique account number. Well, I want to keep it associated uh, very closely with my checking account, so how about I use 10,020? 10,000 accounts are generally associated with your asset accounts in traditional banking nomenclature. Our name, Wells Fargo Savings. And again, we're going to select our account type and not just an asset, but that specialized asset bank checking option. And upon selecting that type, you can see a lot of other information opens up for us as well such as the bank and checking account numbers. Now, these are entirely optional. It's for reference only. Design Manager does nothing with that uh, information. So if you want to input it for your reference, fantastic. Otherwise, you can certainly leave it blank. 
There's the closed as of end of fiscal amount option. This isn't uh, portraying too much to us because we're creating a brand new account, but let's say our savings account, uh, we close uh, in the future. I could select a particular fiscal month, which Design Manager will prevent any information being input into that account later than that closed fiscal month. So if your account is being no longer used, you can use that option to prevent yourself from actually inputting information into the account erroneously. Next, positive pay file creation. Let's talk about that for one brief moment. Positive pay is an automated fraud detection tool offered by cash management departments of most banks. It's a service that matches the account number, check number, and dollar amount of each check presented for payment against a list of checks previously authorized and issued by the company. All three components of the check must match exactly or it won't be paid for by the bank. Positive pay requires your company to send or transmit a file of issued checks to the bank each day checks are written. When the issued checks are presented for payment at the bank, they are compared electronically against a list of transmitted checks. The check issue file sent to the bank uh, contains the check number, account number, issue date, and the dollar amount, and optionally some other information as well. When a check is presented that does not have a match, let's call it, in the file, it becomes an exception item. The bank then sends a fax or an email or an image um, of the accepted item to the client, i.e. your company. And then you can review the image and instruct the bank to pay the check if it's correct or to withhold it if it's incorrect. Really, it's just a, a checks and balances between the checks that you've created and what the bank is truly going to issue. Now notice, many banks do these, but the format of each is different for almost every bank. So as time goes on, we at Design Manager have created a whole bunch of these positive pay formats that you can select based upon the name or the banking institution that you use. Along with that is the file location. Where do you want the, uh, check, in, the check compare file to be created? And you have two options along the bottom to include voided checks. So if you made a check and then voided it, do you want that in the file? Some banks want that, some don't and the option to include hand checks as well. If you didn't actually process a check in Design Manager uh, using the check printing, but just wrote one out and input it as such, you can have those options as well. Very uh, handy feature, very safeguarded feature, and it's becoming used more and more frequently in our experience. So positive pay, something to look into. So now we have our Wells Fargo savings account. And upon clicking OK, because we have selected the specialized asset bank check checking option, Design Manager alerts us to, would we like to create what's known as a payment type at this time? And that brings us right into our next topic on recording cash receipts, and that is the concept of a payment type. Now, payment types are located on our company information AR showroom tab. To get there, we click on our file. Oops, click OK here. That gets us to our payment type window, which we'll just slide over because we'll be getting back to that in a second. Now, payment types are located on the company information window, as I just said, which we select file, company information and settings. And on our company information window, click that AR and showroom tab. And here we can see our grid for cash receipt payment types. Now, payment types have many uses, but fundamentally, they're used to associate the proper bank checking account with the method of payment from the client or other source of funds, quite honestly. In other words, by utilizing payment types, we don't need to remember when to record receipts into the checking account or the savings account or the money market account or petty cash, whatever. Just by selecting the payment type that indicates the method in which the client provided the funds, Design Manager will automatically record it into the proper account. Now listed here are the pretty much the default payment types that come configured with Design Manager, and they're all currently linked to our checking account. And notice that we've even can see our updated Wells Fargo checking name listed as well. However, let's say as an example, when our client pays in cash, we always want to deposit that into our new savings account. So we can just change the payment type to reflect that fact. So let's select our cash payment type, 
click the edit button as indicated by the pencil. And rather than having our cash associated with our checking account, we can drop that down and select our brand new Wells Fargo savings account. While we're here, let's take a look at some other options. Data collection, let's hold on for one moment. We'll get into that in a, in a, in a, in a moment or two. But let's focus on the next two options. First, the receipts will appear in undeposited funds. In other words, a bank deposit is made. This option indicates that for this method of payment or this payment type from the client, we want to accumulate these receipts in a holding area, which Design Manager calls undeposited funds. And then we'll actually process a deposit slip when we go to the banking institution and really bring the checks over or other types of payment methods. We'll see how this functions a bit later. But for now, with our cash transactions, we do want to hold those until we actually go to the bank. So I'm going to leave that option as selected. The next one, exclude from POS, exclude from point of sale. This option is for Design Manager's point of sale system, and it indicates whether or not to display the payment type when recording a point of sale invoice. For example, uh, let's say we have a payment type for a wire transfer. Since it would be very unusual for a client to uh, want to wire or electronically transfer us funds rather than paying by cash or check or credit card as they are buying merchandise from our showroom, we could opt not to have the wire transfer payment type as an option uh, when recording a point of sale invoice just to prevent a user from erroneously selecting it and then the funds going into an improper account. But for cash transactions, we certainly want to leave those on the point of sale uh, payment selection, so we'll leave that chat, that option as unselected. Let's click OK, and now we can see that we have changed our cash payment type to go directly into our uh, Wells Fargo savings account rather than the checking account. We also have a few payment types configured for the standard credit cards. Let's take a look at Visa as an example. Now, uh, our merchant service provider has our funds from our Visa credit card transactions going right into our checking account, so that's already configured. But now let's discuss that data collection, as it has particular points importance for point of sale invoices, but other functions as well. Now, Visa is designated as credit card, and because as such, when you're making a point of sale invoice, you're able to put in a credit card number of when recording the invoice and it'll actually print on the point of sale invoice uh, for your client's reference and for your own. And there's other options as well. Generic, uh, when if that's selected for a payment type, you can enter a transaction description when processing a point of sale invoice. Check gives you the ability to enter the client's check number when recording a point of sale invoice. And finally, merchantware. Now, Design Manager has partnered with Cayenne, one of the largest credit card processors in the country. Now, if you subscribe to that service, you would use the merchantware option uh, to indicate which payment types are allowed to enter or use uh, to swipe the client's credit card for payment and not only have Design Manager record the cash receipt, but actually process the credit card transaction through the merchantware gateway as well. Now, we'll be having a full webinar on setting up Cayenne accounts using Merchantware for credit cards in the near future, so stay tuned if that interests you. Okay, now you can move payment types up and down in, let's call it priority, using the up and down arrows along the right-hand side of the grid. For example, let's imagine that we don't frequently get paid with cash, so I may want to have that lower on my payment type list, so I can just click the arrow and put it underneath all of the credit cards. Okay, now let's return back to our point of sale payment type that was offered to be created for us when we put in our Wells Fargo savings account. And let's imagine that we've configured our savings account to accept wire transfers from clients and want a payment type to, uh, to reflect that. So let's make a wire payment type and that's already configured for our savings account. We'll leave the data collection as generic. We don't need receipts to go into undeposited funds. Once a transfer occurs, it goes right into your uh, selected account, so there's no need to process a deposit slip or other transaction. And let's go ahead and exclude that from the point of sale, as we just discussed. And if we click OK, 
we can see our savings account on our account glossary and back on our company information, showroom AR, there is our brand new wire transfer payment type as well. And let's scoot him down above cash. And there we go. Okay, so now that we've input the proper configuration of uh, recording receipts in Design Manager and discussing some of the mechanics behind the scenes, let's discuss the actual process of entering the cash receipts themselves. First off, there are four types of cash receipts in Design Manager, three of which derive from interactions with clients, while one usually does not, and they are retainers, deposits on proposals, payments on client invoices, and miscellaneous cash receipts. Let's briefly discuss the purpose of the first three. Deposits on proposals. Deposits are monies received from the client to be specifically applied to a particular proposal. The funds are then intricately tied or associated with the items contained on the proposal. Upon invoicing the client for those items, design manager is going to automatically apply the deposit, thereby reducing the balance due on the client invoice. Retainers. Retainers represent funds from uh, received from the client at the beginning of the project or during the project or beginning of a phase of a project. And it's really the working capital to be used for purchasing, et cetera. Unlike deposits, retainers are not tied to particular items, but need to be manually uh, applied to client invoices or otherwise uh, reallocated. For more information on deposits and retainers, such they are such a uh, fundamental and important aspect of the design business, review our webinar on that topic. And that's under our Accounting Course 1, Client Deposits and Retainers, which you can see at our YouTube channel at Design Manager Inc. And I review all of that information, which I go into great detail discussing. Lastly, payments on invoices. Payments can be recorded for client invoices with outstanding balances. For more information on invoicing in general and invoicing reports or billing reports, you can also review our accounting course too, client invoices and billing reports. So all that information is covered on that webinar. Okay, now, regardless of which type of receipt we are recording, the procedure to do so is nearly identical. Quite frankly, I find recording of receipts to be one of the most straightforward procedures um, in Design Manager. It's really just a matter of telling the software what receipt is being recorded for and the necessary information about the receipt itself. Just tell Design Manager where the receipt is going and any information you have about it. All receipts are effectively entered through a single familiar window, and that's the cash receipt window. That's located under our accounting tab in our accounts receivable frame, and there's our cash receipts button. Clicking it gets us to our cash receipt window. And we have three tabs here. The new tab, that's for entering in brand new transactions that we haven't yet recorded. The existing tab, that's going to be a listing of all of the receipts we've recorded to date prior. And finally, the make bank deposit tab. And we'll go through each of those in much detail. But on our new tab, we don't have many options. All we can really do is click one of the add buttons. And for any of the receipts being recorded from a client, you want to focus on the single, simple add button in the bottom left. And when we click on it, we get to our new cash receipt window. So let's go ahead and record one of the receipts for each of the various types of transactions that are client-based. And let's begin with the retainer. Let's say the Carters have sent us a check for a second retainer of, I don't know, $5,000 for their Pennington home, which is uh, Project CAR01. On our new cash receipt window, in the look by, look up by frame, you tell Design Manager how you want to enter your receipt, and you could do so in a few different ways. You could focus on a particular project. You could focus on a particular client. Very handy if the client has multiple ongoing projects and you want to be able to allocate receipts across projects, or even, for a particular invoice number. If you know the invoice number the client is paying, you can input it right here as well. And we can see if we select the 
Carter's Pennington Home off of our project drop down. We're only focusing on any uh, retainers, deposits, and payments on invoices for that particular project, CAR01. In contrast, if we go by client and select the Carters, we now have selections for both of the Carters projects, the Pennington Home and the Brigantine Beach Home. And we can see we have open invoices and the ability to enter retainers and deposits for either of the projects. But for our sake, let's focus just on the Pennington Home project. Okay, now, as I said, entering receipts, very simple. Just enter the information about the receipt necessary for Design Manager. Starting from top to bottom, right to left, the first thing we want to do is enter the amount. This is always the value of the receipt, regardless of the method of payment. And we said it's an even 5,000. Now, I don't need any decimals or dollar signs or anything like that unless I have a, a receipt that has <clears throat> change on it. Just by typing in the 5,000 even and tabbing forward, Design Manager forwards and verifies that for us. The date. Uh, this is the date that the rec uh, receipt was received, or it could be the date on the check itself, uh, or the transaction date, particularly for credit card and wire transfer receipts. So let's say that this, uh, this check was dated 6-4. Now I could use my search option and select the date, or I could just manually input it. And remember, in Design Manager, to put a date in, you don't need to put leading zeros for the month, so you don't need to put slashes in there. You don't even need to put the year in, quite frankly. If I want to reflect the fact that this was uh, this check was dated on June 4th, I simply type six for the month, space, four for the day, and just tab. Design Manager is going to assume it's the current year and puts in the 2018 for us and formats the date uh, automatically. Now, obviously, if I was putting in a, uh, a check from a prior year, I'd have to put in 2017, 2016, et cetera, but it really makes your, your date entry very fast and easy. Payment types, we just discussed those at length, and I said it was a check, so we'll go ahead and select check. And upon doing so, notice the deposit slip field disappears, as we need to we need to really process a deposit slip transaction for all check payment types, which we'll do a little bit later in the discussion. The check number is entirely optional. That's the client's check number. I do suggest inputting it, as you can uh, need it for reference on a multitude of different reasons as time goes on. Now, that's the information about the check itself. $5,000 check from the client check number 5,500. What we need to do now is to indicate to Design Manager the nature of the receipt or the check. In other words, what are we recording these funds for? And we have two grids to do so, as we briefly saw. Our first grid is for client deposits and retainers, and the second grid is for payments on invoices. Since we're, we're entering in a retainer, Let's turn our attention to that top grid. For a retainer, we always need to manually enter the value of the retainer, as there's no way for Design Manager to provide, let's call it a default value for the retainer, as it can do for deposits and payments, which we'll see shortly. And if we look at the columns available for us, we have our payer tag column, which we'll see in a moment, the project in question, proposal number and date, doesn't pertain to a retainer because that could be a, a wide variety of different options in there, the name or description, and there's always going to be a, one line per project for retainers. So as we saw when we we're entering in by, uh, by client, there was one retainer line for both of the Carter's projects. There is no requested amount with retainers, received to date zero, all retainers that we've received so far for the Carter project would be accumulated there for our reference what's available, and the this payment. This payment is the most important column. That's the amount that we're recording of that particular distribution. As I said before, there's no way for Design Manager to default a retainer amount, so it has to get entered manually. Well, how do we do that? Easy, just make sure that the retainer line is highlighted and click the edit button as indicated by the pencil. What is the amount? Well, $5,000, just like our total check amount. Transaction descriptions, entirely optional. 
but I find them extremely useful when I'm trying to research information that may have entered in weeks, months, or even years prior. Let's just say additional retainer, and we'll go ahead and click OK. Now, notice what happened. My this payment column reflects that 5,000, and Design Manager automatically tagged or selected our retainer for us. And when it does, all of our totals along our, the bottom recalculate for us. And we can see we have a total deposits and retainers of 5,000, that's correct. We have no payments on invoices right now, we'll get to those later. So our total receipt is 5,000. As that matches the amount of our check exactly, we have a difference of zero. If we go ahead and click OK, we've now saved or recorded our retainer. But this is not yet actually posted or reflected in our accounting records. We simply entered the receipt at this point, and we can continue to do so for our entire stack of checks to make our data entry as fast and accurate as possible. But let's see what's information is shown to us on our, uh, on our new cash receipt grid. We have the ability to hold receipts. If I just wanted to enter them but not post them, I could select it as being held. We show the client code and client name, the check number, the payment status for merchantware credit card transactions would also appear, appear here, the date, payment type, the amount. What is that? check or receipt being applied towards under the project order invoice proposal information column, the deposit slip, which will be changed when we process our deposit slip in a little while, the cash account, which is currently our undeposited funds because we haven't yet recorded it directly into our checking account, and the offset account. What's the other side of this transaction? And in this case, it's our client deposit account. Our total receipts that we've added so far is conveniently summated in the top right corner. And from here, we have some other abilities available to us. I can go ahead and keep adding receipts all day long until they're all entered successfully. I could edit or make any changes. Perhaps I have the wrong check number here. Well, I could just edit the receipt, change the check number as necessary. If I entered it twice, perhaps I could delete the entry right off of our grid. I also have the ability to print out a journal. The journal is a listing of all the receipts we've entered and we're about to post. In fact, you can force journals for all accounting transactions to be physically printed from your records using the required journal company setting. And that's located under our company information and settings window again. Now we're going into the advanced, the general tab, and we have the option to require journals. That would force me to physically print a journal prior to posting or truly recording the receipts into our uh, accounting records. Let's take a look at our journal. Now notice, journals were always, <clears throat> excuse me, configured to go directly to the print device. So if I wanna have a print preview first, I wanna unselect our direct to printer option and then click okay. And here's our cash receipt posting list. And it has all of the information that was shown on our uh, new, new grid, fiscal month, the user myself, and then the transaction, the type, and all of the information that we just saw. And conveniently, a nice account summary at the bottom as well. And if this information is important to me, I would then print or save my cash receipt posting list for my records prior to truly posting uh, our, our retainer receipt. Once everything is to my satisfaction, I can go ahead and click the post button. Design manager will always ask me if I'm sure that I wish to post. It's gonna tell me what fiscal month I'm posting into. And by clicking yes, any and all transactions on our new, our new tab that are not set to being held will be posted. And then move off of our new tab and onto our existing tab along with all of our other previously entered transactions. Now, as Design Manager is fully integrated, that information is immediately seen in many other areas throughout the software. For example, if we look at our Projects Status tab, 
for the Carters, we can see retainers received right on our summary tab in our client deposit retainer frame. And we can even see that in more detail on our deposits retainers grid. Now, if we go to our checking window and we look at our checking account, this is one area where we don't see our $5,000 retainer. Why? Well, remember, we're, it's not appearing in our checkbook yet because it's waiting for a deposit slip to be processed, which we'll be discussing shortly. All of those checks uh, so far are being recorded in our undeposited fund account. Speaking of the undeposited fund account, let's take a look at our balance sheet again. And now, if we focus on our, ass our assets, here's our undeposited funds accounts, and there's our $5,000 retainer. Absolutely an asset where it should be, but it's not yet associated with our true checking account at this point. Okay, retainers, very simple. Retainers go hand in hand with deposits. And deposit for the procedure for entering deposit on a proposal, it's nearly identical to that of a retainer. So let's take another hypothetical. Let's say that the Hilsons have uh, sent us a $2,500 wire for a deposit on one of their proposals for their outdoor living area, perhaps. So that gets us back to our accounting tab, back to our familiar cash receipt window. And once again, we're gonna click add. Put in our Hilson project. And there we can see our outdoor living area. And we can see now this requested deposit amount. Where does that come from? Well, let's leave our, net, our new cash receipt window up for a moment and take a look at our proposals window. And we can see, here's proposal two for our outdoor living area. And we can see the total requested deposit amount listed there for us. But we asked for 2550. I just said that the Helsons only wired us 2500. Well, we can handle that very easily as well. Let's take a look. Back on our new cash receipt window, there's our proposal too for our outdoor living area, but we did see there are two proposals for the Hilson Pocono home. Why don't we see proposal one being listed? Well, here's why. Let's click the show all option. And when we do, ah, just like that, we can see proposal one. Why don't I see it by default? Design manager to make your data entry as, as uh, easy and, and quick to use as possible is going to prevent proposals from being listed where the received to date amount equals or exceeds the requested amount. That's just to prevent you from uh, inputting a deposit on an incorrect proposal or really just to make the uh, list of proposals as manageable as possible and keep the ones that are progressed uh, already uh, out of your view. Here's another common uh, issue that may, may arise. If the user entering in the information didn't put a deposit percentage on the item, and therefore it's not gonna have a total requested deposit amount, you would always need to use the show all option to see that proposal being listed because the requested amount would always be zero. Okay, let's turn that guy off, focus on our, um, our particular proposal for the outdoor living area. And here we do have a couple additional uh, pieces of information on our client deposit grid. There's our retainer line. As we said, we always have one line for retainers being shown on the client deposit retainer grid. And in this case, we can see that we've received 7,500 to date and all that is still available as well. So there's a snapshot of information being applied for us. On the proposal line, now we can see the proposal number, the proposal date, we see the project name and the name or phase of the proposal listed beneath it, the requested amount and anything we've received to date so far. In this case, Design Manager can offer a default amount of $2,550. The this payment gets calculated for deposits on proposals by looking at the requested deposit amount less anything received to date would be the default value for the this payment column. 
So now let's go ahead and enter our wire in. First, the amount, 2,500. Remember, it's always the amount of the transaction. Yes, I wanted 2,550, but I did not get that. I only got 2,500. The date, let's say it was wired on the 6th. We'll go ahead and switch that. Payment type, we'll use our wire. Notice for those of uh, the highly observant out there, the listing or the order of our payment types mirrors what's on our company information window, which again, you can control using the up and down arrows. Remember how we, we moved wire and cash to the bottom, and this is how you can see them being displayed. We'll select wire. When we do, the deposit slip number still remains and it throws the wire payment type into the deposit slip. The combination of the receipt date and the deposit slip number will group receipts together on the checkbook window and on the checkbook reconciliation window. So the receipts of the same type and date will appear as a, as a single entry. If we don't want that to happen, we can always manipulate the deposit slip number to do so, which we'll do in a little bit. Check number. We can leave blank or we could uh, input wire transfer or something along those lines if desired. But if we go ahead and select or tag our deposit, our totals recalculate as we would imagine. We can see our 2550 of this payment being displayed, no payments on invoices, our total receipt, but that does not match our amount properly. There's a difference of $50. So if we try to go ahead and record this or save the deposit transaction, Divine Man, Divine Man is going to say, no, there's some inconsistency here. The amount of cash being received must match the total amount of all tagged or selected records. So I either need to input the proper amount or my distribution is incorrect or my this payment columns are this correct or incorrect. So if we then edit, our deposit entry, put in the proper 2,500. Let's uh, make a more in-depth or informative transaction description. Slight under payment. Click OK. Automatically selected for us. And now our total deposit retainer is 2,500. So our receipt matches our amount exactly and our difference is zero. And now we can go ahead and click OK. We can print our journal if desired, but let's go ahead and post. And now we can see our deposit listed on our existing tab as well. Further, back on our proposal window, we can see our outdoor living area. We requested 2550, but we only received 2500. We can see the receipt date listed for us. And if we go even a little deeper into our proposal status window, Notice we have the individual requested deposit amounts for each item. But since we received $50 less, Design Manager proportionally reduces the deposit received from the requested amount for each of the items. So rather than having a full 910 for our bar stools, we only have uh, 892.16. If we look on our checkbook, now, this was a wire transfer. That's associated with our new savings account. So if we drop our account menu down to savings, we can see our 2500 immediately listed there and even get some more information with the details button. We don't recall, remember recall, we don't have to process a deposit of transaction for our wire. It goes right into our account. So we can see it immediately on the checkbook. And correspondingly, back on our balance sheet, Rather than increasing our undeposited funds, we can see our 2,500 directly into our Wells Fargo savings account. Okay, deposits. Finally, let's talk about the third transaction for um, our, our client information. That's going to be payments on invoices. Payments on outstanding client invoices are also recorded in the same manner. Basically, if you can record any type of receipt, you can record them all. So let's say in this example that the carters also wire over the necessary funds to pay the balance on one of their invoices. Let's close some of this out. We'll go back to our accounting, cash receipts, and 
again, they're getting very familiar now. We'll go ahead and click add on our cash receipt window. Now, let's imagine that they're paying for a particular invoice. Well, I know the projects they're working with, so I could select a project if I wanted to. We saw we could do it by uh, client as well. But if the card is indicated to me exactly what invoice they're paying, I could use the invoice number selection. I could even do a search on all open invoices. And let's imagine they're paying off the balance on their Brigantine Beach Home invoice 10003 If we go ahead and select or choose that, Design Manager throws the look up into a client mode, so we see all the information for both projects. But we, on our payments on invoices grid, conveniently, we already have the, I, the invoice 10003 found and selected for us. Let's go ahead and look at our payment on invoices grid in comparison with the, uh, the grid above for deposits and retainers. So we have our tag column, the project associated, the invoice number, the date. If we input a, a proposal number while creating the invoice, that would be listed. The name and or transaction description would be listed in the, third, in the, in the middle column. The original balance due, payments to date, and the this payment. So we can see this payment can also be defaulted for us. In this case, it's going to be the original balance due less any payments to date. So invo invoice 10,000 has been paid in full, so it's defaulting zero. Invoice 10,001 had a balance of 10,908.70, and we already have a payment made, so it's defaulting the difference between the two. And in our case, we have no payments to date, so design managers defaulting the original balance due for us as the this payment. So now we just need to, again, enter the information about the wire transfer. We said they paid, uh, they wired the exact amount, which was the 115528 date. Let's say they wired that one also on the 6th. Payment type, wire. Check number, uh, again, we could put wire transfer if we wanted to or something along those lines. Now, I may not want to have my wire transfers being grouped together into a large transaction on my checkbook because usually they're going to appear as single entries on my actual bank statement. Since I already have one wire on the sixth, perhaps I could just do something as simple as inputting wire two as the deposit slip number. That's going to separate or break out those transactions on our checkbook and our reconciliation windows. And now, if we look at our totals, we don't have any deposit retainers in this case. Rather, we have a single payment and that matches our amount precisely, so our difference is zero. Another very convenient feature on your new cash receipt window is the OK Add button. If I have a whole stack of wire transfers to enter or checks or, or combination of both, I don't have to click OK and then click Add on the outside again and again and again. I can use the OK Add. This will save our, um, our payment on our invoice, but keep our new cash receipt window up so we can enter in as many transactions as we need as fast as we possibly can. And if we look, there is our wire transfer for our payment on invoice waiting for us. In this case, notice the offset account is no longer client deposits as it was for our retainers and deposits, but rather it's going to be the accounts receivable. So we're going to be reducing that as we uh, record the payment, of course. I could print my journal, or I could go ahead and post. And there is our wire transfer. Now notice I input the wire transfer as the check number, so that appears in the column versus for the Hilsons where I did not input a, a, any information into that field. Again, we can see that on our checkbook. Let's take a look at our savings account and notice there's our Hilson wire. And by inputting that wire two, rather than combining both transactions, it's listing it independently for me. And if we look on our client invoices existing tab, there's our invoice 10,003. 
and we can see our payment. So there's no balance due uh, any longer on the invoice itself. And of course, correspondingly on our project status window, we can see we've received a payment. And if we go to our invoices tab, there is our invoice paid in full. So since Design Manager is fully integrated, just by posting that receipt, we see all that information throughout the software. Okay, those are our three client-based uh, cash receipts. Before we get to our fourth cash receipt, I want to uh, I want to do an experiment or an example of another common <clears throat> scenario that arises. Frequently, particularly on large projects, a client may remit a receipt that covers several different entities or distributions. For example, let's say the carters send a check for ten thousand to pay the balance on two invoices, and they want the remainder to be put into the retainer account for their Pennington Home project. Well, it's a single check, but now I've got payments and retainers at once. How do I input that? Well, guess what? It's very, it's very easy. Back in our accounting tab, again, cash receipts, and once again, we're going to add. Let's look up by client. We'll use the Carters. And as is becoming uh, very habitual now, let's enter all the information about our receipt. The check was $10,000. Today's date is just fine. Let's do our payment type of check. Put the check number. Before, we were having a, a single receipt for a single transaction, but now we're spreading this 10,000 over a multitude of entities. Well, let's tell Design Manager that. So we're paying both of our invoices as per the client's, uh, the, the client's wishes. So we have a total payment of invoices of 6,065. They want the balance to go to their Pennington Home retainer. Okay. So we have both of our retainers listed on our client deposit retainer grid. We always have to input the amount we wanna record for a retainer. So I'm ensuring that I'm on the Pennington retainer. I hit my edit button and I go ahead and put in that balance. Balance of receipt and click okay. By clicking okay, my retainer gets uh, selected as well. So in this case, we have 3,935 of retainer and total payments on invoices of 6,065. The sum of all of those is our 10,000, which matches our check amount precisely, and we have a difference of, of zero. Click OK, and now we have a single check receipt, but look at our distributions. We have three listed. There's our retainer of 3,935 and the two payments on invoices. And we can even see all or both of the offset accounts of client deposit and accounts receivable being affected and the amounts as well. So design managers handling that distribution for that check against all of these invoices and retainers simultaneously for us. And if we click post and put our check through, let's look at our existing tab now. Notice, unlike our wire transfer for our payment on invoice where we had one distribution along the bottom, we now have three various distributions for our singular check. Okay, easy. One big receipt or transaction that can get to apply to many different entities throughout Design Manager. So we've reviewed the three most commonly used receipt types, but we do have one more. And I mentioned before, the miscellaneous cash receipt. Now these are for any funds coming into the company from sources other than your clients. Common examples would be tax refunds, commissions, uh, certain cash back reward programs if they actually send you funds, et cetera. So let's imagine that we received a $75 commission check from one of our vendors for reselling some antiques. So to input our miscellaneous cash receipt, we stay on our cash receipt window, but rather than using the add button, we're going to use the add miscellaneous. And that brings us to our simple miscellaneous cash receipt window. 
And again, it's just a matter of inputting the information of the receipt in the same fashion we did for our client-based transactions. Let's say that the uh, check was dated 6-4, payment type was check, put the vendor's check number in there, deposit slip goes to check, miscellaneous is our type, the name. Now, the name could be uh, the name of the company or individual providing the funds or anything really to describe it for you. Let's say it's Legacy Antiques. The amount, you said $75. Now, the offset account. This represents the general source of the miscellaneous cash receipts. In other words, why are we receiving these funds? Very commonly, the uh, account will be a revenue account. And if we go ahead and do a search, let's go find a commission account, and we have a few, we want to use our revenue commission account. What the offset account will not be is the cash account. That's already determined by our payment type, as we know. So it's never the cash account itself. Uh, nor should it be any specialized account, like your account's receivable account, your client deposit account, your vendor deposit account, except in very, very specific situations. Transaction description, uh, commission for antiques, and we're ready to go. Click OK, and now we can see we don't have a client code, of course. We have the name uh, is our legacy antiques, check number, date, payment type, amount, and in this case, our offset account is our commissions. Click post. And there's our miscellaneous cash receipt being listed for us. And again, now we can see our client code is blank, but we can see the, uh, the fact that it is a miscellaneous cash receipt as design manager puts the MISC in there for us and the name that we entered on our miscellaneous cash receipt. And if we look at our accounts, let's jump down to that commission account. And if we look at the balances, we can see our $75 being recorded there. Next, we have uh, tangentially discussed the concept of processing a deposit slip. Well, in short, we're actually indicating that we've physically taken our checks, cash, et cetera, from our client to the banking institution by creating and processing a deposit slip. When I use the term deposit slip, I mean it in the most literal sense. Design managers partnered with Nelco for check forms and other documents, and one of these documents is the deposit slip. With Design Manager, you can actually print on a deposit slip form from Nelco. And upon processing the deposit slip, the receipts transfer out of that undeposited funds account into the designated uh, checking or savings account. Let's see how this works. To process a deposit, we stay right on our cash receipt window and go to our third and final tab for Make Bank Deposit. And when we do, we're going to see all the receipts that were entered using a payment type that's set for receipts will first appear in undeposited funds. For example, whenever we always deposit checks from uh, our clients into our checking account, and we can see all the checks that we're inputting today. If we switch our account menu from our checking account to savings, there's going to be nothing listed. Remember, our savings doesn't use or uh, apply un uh, undeposited funds for processing. So we'll never have any uh, we'll never have any transactions listed in our savings account. Now, by default, all of the checks are tagged automatically for us, and we can see the selected total listed conveniently as well. If you don't want to include one on your deposit slip, just uncheck it and Design Manager will automatically recalculate the selected total for you. To print and process the deposit slip, well, just click the Print button, and that gets us to our Print Deposit Slip uh, window. The deposit date, that should be, it's going to default to today, but it should be the date that you physically deposited the funds to the, day, uh, to the bank. The deposit slip number. If you have uh, the NELCO forms or another compatible deposit slip, input the slip number. If the deposit slip doesn't have a number, just use the slips are not number, just use the date option, and we'll automatically use uh, the current date formatted in month-month, uh, day-day, YY for you.
let's go ahead and imagine that we did have a slip number and I'll just pop that in there. Our checks total, this is going to be the amount of all non-cash uh, receipts. The cash total, if we have a payment type of cash, which we do, all of the receipts using that payment type would appear here for us. And then the sum of the checks and cash total is the total deposit. If we click OK, we can see a sample of the deposit slip itself. And you're going to have the total deposit amount, the total number of uh, receipts themselves or checks themselves, and a listing of each. Obviously, this is designed to print directly onto that NOCO uh, deposit slip form. And after printing, like many other documents in Design Manager, we simply close the print preview window and we're actually going to accept the deposit slip to process it. And when we do, all of our selected entries drop off of our Make Bank Deposit grid. And now, if we look at our existing tab, all of those checks are now set to our Wells Fargo checking account rather than our undeposited funds. And if we look on our checkbook window, we can see here's our singular entry for our deposit slip for the total amount. We can always use the details to see each of the transactions listed beneath them. And further, Looking at the Carters, we can see that $10,000, we can even see all of the three distributions there as well. And now on our balance sheet, our undeposited funds has gone to zero and is no longer being listed, but we can see that our Wells Fargo checking account has increased by that $15,000 and change. Okay. Great, so now we know how to record receipts. What happens if we notice an error? Well, first off, we can simply edit the receipt and make any appropriate changes. Let's say that our wire from the Hilsons wasn't actually 2,500, but it was indeed the 2,550 that we, that we uh, requested, and we just read the amount incorrectly. So now we go to our cash receipts, and we go to our existing tab, which we have looked at a few times now. But let's take a moment to review some of the columns here as well. <laughs> We can see the reference number of the receipt, the date of the receipt, fiscal month, check number or uh, check information or receipt information, the total amount, client code and name, payment type, deposit slip number, cash account, cash account name, the exact time it was posted and entered, and by who, uh, which user in the company did it, and the maximum code. That is the receipt itself along our top grid. But as we showed briefly before, the payment distribution shows all of the pieces affected by the receipt highlighted on the top grid. So using our $10,000 check from the Carters as an example, we can see the amount of each of those as well. And all of our columns are similar along the bottom. The unique transaction itself, the type of the um, transaction, the retainer deposit, payment on invoice, the amount, project code, name, proposal number, invoice number, transaction description, and the appropriate offset account. So a lot of information is really available for you on this existing tab. And if we want to correct our wire transfer from the Hilsons, let's just highlight it and click the edit button. We can see our receipt information. This is for the total receipt itself. Um, if we make any changes to this and it's part of a larger cash receipt, like our $10,000 from the, uh, the Carters, the check, it will change that for all of the distributions. So be sure that you want, you intend to do so. But all we need to do, let's change our amount to 2550 and let's say that I would rather have wire transfer listed as the check information. And if we click OK, we can immediately see that our total amount and our distribution amount increase, and we can see that our check number now says wire transfer. It's that easy. And if we look back on our checking window, savings, the deposit slip is updated there. And all the way back on our proposal for the Hilsons, 
Now we can see our requested amount does match our received amount, and we can see that we have that wire transfer information listed into our, um, into our client check number as well. And all of our received deposits on a per item basis now match the requested deposit amount as well. Okay, what if we wanna remove a receipt entirely in case it's a duplicate or et cetera? We could do so easily by just voiding the receipt. Let's imagine now that the uh, Carter's wire payment for uh, their paid invoice that we entered was never really executed, never went through. So back on our existing tab, in that case, we want to find our wire transfer from the Carters, and we're going to void. Now, this wire transfer only has the one distribution, but our payment, our check from the Carters for the 10,000 has three. So there's actually two ways to void. You can void an individual distribution or all of them. So if I click void all here, all pieces of our 10,000 would be removed rather than click the void button, which would take out just the payment on invoice that I have selected. So you have total control over that. Our example is a little bit easier because there is only one distribution. So we can just void and design manager removes that receipt from our existing cash receipt window. Now what happens? Well, Back on our existing client invoices, we can see that payment is voided and the invoice now has a balance due again. And back on our checking window, instantaneously in our savings account, that wire transfer for the 1100 and change is removed. Two other features on our existing tab. Deposit slip. I could actually use my deposit slip button here to reprint our no code deposit slip. So I have our deposit slip number 44145 highlighted for one of the receipts. And I can reprint it very easily. Further, I have the credit card receipt option. Now, if I have um, if I have subscribed to a Cayenne's merchant wear credit card payment processes uh, service that I described before, and I recorded a, a swiped or entered credit card transaction from my client, I could use the credit card receipt option to reprint a slip for the client's records. Very convenient, particularly in the showroom case uh, scenarios. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our discussion today, which was a lengthy a discussion on procedures for entering the four types of receipts and design managers, and they are again retainers, deposits on proposals, payments on invoices, and miscellaneous cash receipts. We talked about editing, uh, voiding, and deleting these entries. We also discussed creating a bank checking asset accounts and related payment types. We talked about configuring undeposited funds, processing deposit slips, and how all of these concepts affect our checkbook and ultimately our balance sheet as well. And with that, I thank you all for joining the discussion today, and I hope you attend another of our fee webinars in the near future. Take care and have a great day.